Welcome to Electron Online. In the previous two videos, we saw that time is, well, it depends on speed and it depends on gravity. Time is relative. And you say, well, that's theoretical. Is it really true? You may not even believe it. But it turns out that if we did not adjust for the special theory of relativity and the general theory of relativity in our GPS satellite clock systems, well, we wouldn't be able to use GPS. And let me explain, because it does affect GPS actually tremendously. Well, let's say that we look at our GPS satellites. They are at uh, an orbit where they go around the Earth once every approximately 12 hours, just slightly less than 12 hours. And that means that they need to be at a height of about 20,194 kilometers above the surface of the Earth. So on the Earth, we have what we call GPS time, which is really accurate. And in order to keep the time accurate in our satellites, we have put atomic clocks in those satellites. And atomic clocks are extremely accurate. An atomic clock left on the Earth's surface drifts about two nanoseconds in an entire year. And a nanosecond is one billionth of a second. So essentially, two billionths of a second in a year, that's how much they deviate from the actual time. So we can expect when we put those atomic clocks in the satellite that they would keep almost, almost perfect time. But they don't. Because a satellite travels at 3,874 meters per second, which is about 2.4 miles per second, or almost four kilometers per second, which is really, really fast. So they're beginning to feel the effect of the general theory of relativity. The, the faster you travel, the slower time runs. And so it turns out that because of this enormous speed of the satellites, that the time difference using this equation right here for special relativity, we, ca we then can calculate that the clocks run 7.3 microseconds per day slower. Now you may say, 7.3 microseconds, a microsecond is a millionth of a second. Who cares? But in GPS, that is an enormous amount of time. We'll show you in just a moment why. So clocks actually run slower on the satellites due to this speed, to their speed and the relativity related to that. So notice that 7.3 microseconds per day is a whole lot more than 2 nanoseconds per year. It's an enormous difference, so definitely that would play a big role in the accuracy of those atomic clocks. But on top of that, satellites are so far away from the Earth that the gravitational force is a lot less there. And since the gravitational force is less that far away from the surface of the Earth, time actually runs faster and in space at that height away from the Earth than it does on the surface of the Earth itself. So when you calculate the general relativity equation, and of course you have to do this once for the surface of the Earth, you do it again for, the, for where the satellites are at, you take that difference in time, and it turns out that difference in time is about 45.6 microseconds per day, where the clocks actually run faster in the satellites than they do on the surface of the Earth. So when you combine the two, 45.6 microseconds faster due to the general theory of relativity, due to gravity, and 7.3 microseconds per day slower because the special theory of relativity, that's due to the speed of the satellites, when you combine them, that means that the clocks on the satellite, those atomic clocks, run 38 microseconds per day faster than the same, same atomic clocks on the Earth. And so when we keep GPS time on the Earth, which is virtually perfect, we can see that the clocks on the satellites will deviate 38 microseconds every single day. Now you say, 38 microseconds? Who would care about 38 microseconds? But when we receive signals from the GPS satellites, and they travel this distance in approximately oh, about 70 uh, milliseconds or so, right, depending upon where the satellite is at, anywhere from about 60 to about 80 milliseconds. That 38 microseconds makes a huge difference because light travels about one foot every nanosecond. And 38 microseconds is 38,000 nanoseconds. That means light travels 38,000 feet, which is more than seven miles, which is more than 11 kilometers in that amount of time. So after one day, if we did not adjust for the time difference in the clock that they experience each time, the, the, the range 
measurement from where the satellite is to where our receiver is would be off by 7 miles in the first day, 14 miles the second day, 21 miles the third day. You could see that the errors would add up to an incredible amount. And of course, you, couldn't, you wouldn't want to use a, a satellite, uh, a GPS receiver, if it was going to tell you that you're about 20 miles away from where you actually are. You want to know exactly where you are. And therefore, we have to adjust for those time differences. So on a daily basis, the ground support sends to all the satellites the correction factor that we must put in to the satellite in order to adjust for this time difference. We don't reset the clock that often, but we need to let the receivers know that the time that the clock says in the GPS satellite is not the time that it actually is, not the same time as on the Earth right there. We need to know what that difference is, and without that difference, we would be building up enormous errors in our GPS receivers. So, if we do have to take into account for the two factors, one due to speed, one due to gravity, that changes time for the satellites up in space. Can you believe it?